and welcome back to Magic Rival Ixalan Spoilers Day 4. And man, do they are they cramming the spoilers out. Now, I know why they're doing it. They said there's only a week of spoilers this week, so it's crammed in. But man, oh man, is it just... Um, is there, are they just cramming them in? I mean, we have, oh man, we have a lot to go over. So I'm going to try to be, again, I'm going to be as quick as possible with this, but wow, I've got a lot to go over. So let's just go over the, um, the, the headliner for today. We got our third, well, actually we got the blue elder dinosaur and we got the final one. Zakama, Primal Calamity, is Naya color, green, white, and, uh, red. A lot of people were thinking it was going to be five color. I'm glad it's not, because that means I can put this bad boy in the dinosaur deck with Gishoth. And, uh, yeah. S uh, so, and six colors. So nine mana for a 9-9 nine -nine Mythic Rare, Legendary Creature, Elder Dinosaur, Vigilance, Reach, and Trample. If it just had those, it'd be usable. Uh, it'd be fine. Expensive, but fine. When Zakama Primer Calamity enters the battlefield, if you cast it, maybe not if you bring it back from the grave, but if you cast it, untap all lands you control. So if you're casting it, you're getting you're getting it for free more or less because you're untapping all the lands you just played to use it. Then it has three abilities, all cost two of any color and one of a separate color, red, white, and green respectively. The red ability is deal three damage to target creature. Green ability is destroy target enchantment or artifact. And the red, white ability is gain uh, you gain three life. This thing is nuts. The, the art is also awesome. This is pretty much a Hydra, Hydra T-Rex. Uh, this thing is nuts. Because and I know how that how that's set up is that you play it, you untap your land, and you can use every one of those abilities if you want to. Uh, I mean, but also you could just clear the field or just three use three damage and just ping things on the field. You can destroy artifacts or enchantments, or destroy um um actually yeah, destroy freaking legendary lands. There you go. That's the thing that j this thing is so uh, clearly the it's clearly designed to say, hey, this thing's so big it destroys your legendary lands. Uh, actually, no, it can't destroy the lands. It can destroy the chantons before they turn into the lands, but it can't destroy the lands. Or you can just gain yourself life. And I also get that each head represents a different ability. Obviously, Vigilance, Reach, and Trample. It can block the flyers. It's so big. It does not tap when it attacks. It's so big. And it just tramples over everything. Overall, I mean, the commit. Really, this thing is designed very much for commander players. It's just so big. Um, but it's awesome. It really is. I love it. And man, jeez, I got a lot of cards to go over. I got to be quick about this. So we got protein, uh, Prudian Raider, one white, one blue, excuse me, one white, one blue, one red, one blue, one of any color for a 2-2 shapeshifter pirate rare. Raid, if you attacked with a creature this turn, you may have Protean Raider enter the battlefield as a copy of any creature on the battlefield. Solid card, great card, um, uh, solid card anyway. It's not hard to attack with something and you can copy any creature on the battlefield. You can copy the legendary dinosaur and have shenanigans with that. Uh, obviously, legendary rule side. A copy the Everkindling Phoenix. Great stuff. So it, it's a good card, solid card. And now uh, you do need a condition to co do activate the copy, whereas others don't. But it's still good. Fanatical bra uh, Firebrand is one red for a one-one Goblin Pirate with haste. You can tap it, sacrifice it, and deal one damage to target creature or player. It's fine. It's a pinger. It's good. Uh, these little one. That's the kind of one drop with uh, with upside. There's no downside to it, so it's good. Uh, Stormfleet Sprinter is one red, one blue, one of any color for a 2-2 human pirate with haste. Can't be, it's an unblockable. You may say can't be blocked. I'm always going to say unblockable. And on that note, it is fantastic. It's a 2-2 that can't be blocked and can attack immediately. Good, solid, moving on. Golden Demise, two black, one of any color, for a sorcery uncommon with ascend. All creatures get minus two, minus two until the end turn. If you have the city's blessing... Again, 10 or more permanents. You only your opponent's creatures get minus two, minus two. That's going to be premier removal in the set. I can guarantee it. Especially if you can get a send going, which late in the game, this thing, multiple copies of this could actually be very effective. Tomb Robber, one black, two of any color for a rare. Human Pirate, one one with menace. You may disc pay one card or pay uh, ta uh, pay one land of any color. Discard a card. Tomb Raider explores. It can replace itself, or it can, uh, I mean, it, it, it's not just replacing the cards, discarding it necessarily, but it's, uh, a 1-1 one, uh, one for Menace for 3 mana is eh. The fact you can constantly explore and either get more land, or basically can pump it up, this thing, if you're not careful, will become very bad, very, or, or very fearsome very fast. If nothing else, if you just get it for 3-3 three, three in Menace, you immediately got a card that's dangerous, 
get it to 4-4, four, four, which, again, 3-3 three, three is not hard to imagine, especially if you have just spare land on call. And you don't have to put the card on the um, – now, is it on the bottom of the deck? Uh, put the card – oh, you put the card back or you put it into the graveyard, which actually would be even – Again, if it's a land, uh, put it in your hand. Oh, yeah. If, if the card's uh, in... Yeah, put it into your hand if it's a land. Otherwise, put a, a plus one, plus one counter on the creep. Remember, now, if it's not a land, you can just do that multiple times and mass pump this thing. That thing, would that would be ridiculous. Because you could easily just turn it in. If you've got... Let's say it's turn, I don't know. You play this on turn three, go into turn four, play a land. you still got maybe five cards in your hand, or four cards, let's say. And you pay its ability... You could theoretically turn it into a 5-5 five five on turn 4 uh, with Menace. That's nuts. Uh, but it's it's also – but until then, it's kind of squishy, so it could die to things like Golden Demise pretty quick. But still, pretty solid. Dire Fleet Neckbreaker is 1 black, 1 red, 2 of any color for a 3-2. Orc Pirate. Uh, with with attacking pirates can uh, – excuse me. Attacking pirates you control get plus 2, plus 0, oh, which means this thing actually attacks as a 5-3 or sorry, a 5-2. Um, it's, it's good, but it, because it's not adding any butt to, or toughness to the creatures, it's just not it's super good. But this thing doesn't need to attack to have that ability go off. So in the pirate deck, if you're having your pirate just attack in mass, it can be good, especially if you're combining it with, say, the unblockable, uh, red-blue one. We just went over. That means you make a 4-2 pirate, uh, for 3 that would, that's unblockable in haste. So that's actually pretty solid. Jungle Creeper is one green, one black, one of any color for a 3-3 three, three elemental creature. Uh, you may pay three of any color, one black, one green. Return it from your graveyard to your hand. Basically, it just doesn't die. Unless you exile it, it doesn't die. Uh, and it's all right in that case. It's not It's not something I would personally use because you pay, basically I have to pay five and then i got to pay the three again to play a 3-3 three, three that does nothing else. Eh, just not doesn't doesn't seem worth it. now if i have nothing else to do with my mana that's something different but eh, i'm not a big fan of it uh thunder herd migration one green one of any color for sorcery uncommon as an initial cost to cast this card reveal a dinosaur card from your hand or just pay one mana of any color search your library for a basic land card put it into the battlefield tap and then shuffle your library essentially it's um not overgrown balance uh overgrown uh I'm blanking on the word. I've used I'm I've used them. It's um from the Alara block if I remember correctly. Uh it, it, it there's a bet there's a better version of this card. They they put some conditions on that don't make it as good. Uh overgrown balance? No, it's not overgrown balance. Um anyway. Uh so it's I'm not it's okay for the this day and age, but it's just not a not something I would use if I can help. But I've actually have the card that this is. I could Go and look for it right now, but I'm not going to do that because it would be wasting time. Siege Horn Ceratops is one white, one green for a 2 2 dinosaur with a rage. When this creature is dealt damage, put two plus one plus one counters on it. Now, if you. Th this thing will die very quickly unless you can just get one damage on it, which is not impossible with some of the cards in this set or just in the last Ixalan set. As long as you can get one damage, then actually, yeah. Uh, whenever it's still damage, you put those counters on it. It must survive the damage you, uh, you uh, to get the counters. So if you put one, if you give it one damage, it'll become a four-four that's taking one damage. If you say do another one damage, it now becomes a six-six that again has only taken two damage. It's exponential. If you can do that kind of combo, this thing will be disgusting. But it's all a matter of getting that first one pinger on there, it, or pumping it up and then getting a damage on there. So. It's difficult to say. I do like it, but we'll have to see how it plays. <sighs> Nazal, Primal Tide, Final Elder Dinosaur, not including Primal Calamity. Uh, two blue, five and color for a seven seven Elder Dinosaur legendary creature rare. This card cannot be countered. You have no maximum hand size. When an opponent casts a non-creature spell, draw a card. Discard three cards. Exile Nazal or uh, Nezhal. Return to the battlefield tapped under its owner's control at the beginning of the ne uh, next end step. <sighs> okay, there's a lot of words. There's a lot of stuff being put on here. The, it can't be countered thing. That's good. Uh, no maximum hand size. If you're running a deck that needs that, sure, great. Whenever an opponent casts a non-creature spell, draw a card. Fantastic. The discard the three cards is the part in Exile it and then bounce it back at the end of the next end step. 
that's the part I'm a little weird on. That's a weird ability. Especially when you can – it, it kind of contradicts, honestly, the maximum hand size thing. I get I get the draw thing supposed to counteract that too and give you more cards, but it, it really does kind of counteract that to a degree, doesn't it? Uh, I mean, maybe it doesn't, but th it's weird. It's weird. I'm glad we got a plesiosaur. That's cool. But it, it is weird, I think. Uh, but that's just me. I'm, I'm not sure. I think this is, might be my least favorite of the cycle. Uh, not for design. I love its design in terms of artwork. But uh, it might be my least favorite of the cycle. But may, I mean, maybe it's not for you. I don't know. Or maybe it is for you. Maybe you can get it to work. What I can tell you I do like is Vicious Cage Ma is three of any color for a two white or sorry, three of any color, two white for a five-five dinosaur mythic rare in rage. When it is uh, when this creature is dealt damage, exile target creature and opponent controls until vicious cage maw leaves the battlefield. Yeah, again, you want to talk about we uh, we were talking about it, cards that enable you to kind of do one damage to your guys fighting or you know cards that just ping for damage. It's whenever it's dealt damage, exile target creature. I'm gonna remove your things. I'm gonna remove your primal tide. Well, I'm gonna remove it anyway. Fantastic. Um, no, this card, and it's just, it's great, because you just see this feathered t dinosaur, just, T-Rex pretty much just eating this guy. <laughs> so yeah, I like this card. This card's pretty good. This card will go in the dinosaur deck, definitely. Crafty Cut Purse is one blue, three of any color for a 2-2 two, two human pirate, with rare, with flash. When it enters the battlefield, each token that would be created under a opponent's control this turn is created under your control instead. That is unique. That is something we have not really seen is that, hey, I'm going to, I mean, we've seen like the swerve effect before, particularly on the uh, instant swerve, but we haven't really seen that kind of effect. Like, hey, you're going to get this effect in terms of tokens. No, I'm going to get this effect. And I got doubling seasons, so, but it's when you cast it. So anyway, uh, so that's unique. Now you got to be playing and you got, that's the thing. You have to, you have to treat it as, uh, and let me just, uh, again, when this enters the battlefield, yeah. Uh, you have to use it as a sorcery. You can't use it as a creature if you want to get that ability off. Otherwise, you're just paying two, two for a four, or three, four mana for a two, two that does nothing out after that. And that's the thing. After that, it's just a body on the field, which is fine, but it is still a body on the field. So you got to use it as a spell. But as a spell, it's a unique effect. But it's also a very niche effect. If your opponent's not using tokens, then this card's really just going to be taking up space. Um, so yeah, you gotta, you gotta pay attention to it if you know your opponent's, uh, opponent's using a token strategy or not. Dire Fleet Poisoner is one black, one of any color, furry, rare, human pirate, flash, death touch, 2-2. Two, two. When enters the battlefield, target attacking pirate you control gets plus one, plus one against death touch until the end of turn. I'm guessing there's a flash cycle with maybe the, um, pirates? Rare flash cycle? I don't know. I haven't seen, uh, I'd have to go back again through some of the old ones. I haven't seen anything that would say that. As it stands, it's solid. Difference between this guy and the uh, crafty uh, cut purse um, is that this guy you could play on its own as a 2-2 death touch and it enters the battlefield and still gets the effect. In fact, it has flash. Honestly, it makes it just more dangerous. So I like it. It's pretty good. I could just be using it in the normal deck. Steel-clad Ferocidons. The artwork element is a little weird on this one. It looks more like iguanas in armor. Uh, two, red for, two red and five money color for an 8-5. So that... Mono price fits its power and toughness. Rare. In Rage, whenever it is dealt damage, each opponent sacrifices a permanent. Yeah, that works. That uh, that works pretty well. There's a lot of good dinosaurs in this set. There's a lot of dinosaurs in the set to begin with. I'm digging it. Uh, it's, it's pretty good. It's solid. Uh, Going to be better in multiplayer games, definitely. Path of Metal. And that's metal as in M-E-T-T-L-E. One white and one red for a legendary enchantment. When it enters the battlefield, it deals one damage to each creature that does not have first strike, double strike, vigilance, or haste. Dinosaurs much. Whenever you attack with at least two creatures that have first strike, double strike, um, vigilance, or haste, transform Path of me uh, Metal into Metzali? Met Metzali Tower of Triumph. Legendary land, add one mana of any color to your mana pool. You may pay one of any color and one red. It deals... Two damage to each opponent, or and tap it. Uh, or you pay two of any color and one white. Choose a creature at random, and that attack this turn, destroy that creature. There's a lot going on in this card. Now the white red, it definitely enables the or the first ability. It definitely enables dinosaurs, particularly ones that don't have vigilance, haste, or first strike. Uh, now some of them do, so you're not going to target those. And plus, it'll ping your opponents. 
In limited, that could be a backfire in your face, though. However, then you need to attack with something that has either First Strike, Double Strike, Vigilance, or Haste to transform this card. Or at least two creatures that have it. So, I don't I don't know if I could see me using this, at least not in that deck. And then when he transforms, yeah, you're getting a mana of any color, but are those abilities really worth going for the hassle? I, I don't know. But who knows, maybe. Uh, Dire Fleet Daredevil is one red, one of any color for a human pirate rare. 2-1. First strike. When it enters the battlefield, exile target instant or sorcery card from opponent's graveyard. You may pay that card this turn, and you may spend mods if or mods that for any color, and then when you play exile instead. Um, good, but only if you have the mod. Like, like, you would not play this on turn two. You, you, would ju you just wouldn't. Yeah, it's got first strike. But if you want to get the full value out of it, you don't play it on turn two when you only have two, maybe three mana at best to play with. So, yeah, you don't play with that card on turn two. I see this better at the late game and mid or mid game. Honestly, mid game, I can see it. Uh, but I don't know. It's it's good, but it's one of those things that you need to know when to play it. Uh, Dead Eye Rig Huller is one blue, three of any color for a 3 2 human pie with the raid. When it enters the battlefield, if you attack your creature this turn, you may return target creature to its owner's hand. It's a bounce spell. It's fine. Uh, Slaughter to the Strong, two white, one of any color. Now, this is an interesting one. Sorcery, rare. Each player chooses any number of creatures he or she controls with total power, uh, with, a, yeah, with total power four or less, and then sacrifice all other creatures. Basically, it's a dinosaur killer because it needs to be power four or less. Now you can have dinosaurs like uh, that have power four, but dinosaurs are big for a reason. And the flavor is, oh man, kill them their mounts and where is their power? Says Vana Butcher of Magus. Um, it's a good point. It's a killer. But yeah, kill them and what the power do they? Have? I mean, they use the dinosaurs, so yeah, it's it's a it's a good board wipe for getting rid of the big creatures. But if your opponent's using a lot of small creatures, like say they got four vampires on the field or one ones, which is very possible given tokens, kind of defeats the purpose, doesn't it? But it's a good, it's a solid card. I think it's a solid piece of removal. Return to the wind. Two of any color, one blue. Instant, rare. Exile target, non-land, permanent. For as long as that card remains exiled, its owner may cast it without paying its mana cost. I don't get that card, this card at all. Let me, get, let me read that again, just so I understand. Exile target, non-land, permanent. So it could be anywhere. For as long as that card remains exiled, its owner may cast it without paying its mana cost. You already pay that. You already have it out on the field, unless this is a way to protect it from something, which I could see that then. That that's the only that is the only way I can see that is you're protecting. So let's say you have your Zakama out, and someone's going to play Slaughter the Strong. You can bounce. Right, it's out of color, but it's yeah, it's completely out of color. But still, let's say you're in up your splashing. You play it, and you could bounce it and then play it again and then yeah you'll untap all your lands and all that so you get that shenanigan but other than that you've already paid to bring the card out there's no point to it there's no point whatsoever i don't like this card's bad i don't think this card's good again unless it, and again blink out of a or uh, cloud shift is far better than this play cal out shift yeah you're right i'm not that's no longer in the format i get it but i speak from a casual standpoint um moment of craving one black one of any color for instant common target creature gets minus two minus two until the end turn you gain two life solid great use it mythic rare uh azores gateway two of any color for a mythic rare legendary artifact that can transform pay one of any color and tap this card draw a card and then exile a card from your hand if a card with five or more different converted mana costs are exiled with as uh, azores gateway you may gain five life Untap the gateway and transform it into whoop, Sanctum of the Sun. Legendary land. Tap, add X mana of any one color to your mana pool where X is your life total. Where do I begin? Okay. This card, first, this card's good. But it's, you want to talk about a mythic type of ability. That is a mythic type of ability. But the hoops you got to go through to play this card are ridiculous. Uh, it, it's really kind of because you, you gotta pay him one mana, 
you have to tap this card, you have to exile a card from your hand, and then to just transform it, you have to be able to have five different mon cards with five different mana costs exiled by this card. Now, a land can count for a zero mana cost. That is true. So you really only have to deal, like, an, you get rid of an excess land, that's fine, and then you'll be able to tap for mana all you want. Someone's going to destroy this, though, you're screwed. Uh, but then you got to go one mana, two mana, three mana, four mana, five mana. You, you got to have, like, a very balanced curve. Now, that being said, if you can transform this, this is a commander player's wet dream right here. All the mana, all the time, everywhere. Particularly if you're in a life gain strategy, then you're just, you're golden, you're set. So, if you can transform it, when you can transform it, it's great, it's fantastic, play it. But if you can't, I... It, you're better off playing other cards, honestly. You are. Because otherwise, it's not doing anything, is the thing. That's the thing. When you're tapping, it's not doing anything that's really benefiting you at the time. Checking my time. Hit the 20 minute mark. All right. Dead Eye Brawler. One black, one blue, two of any color for a human pirate, two four with death touch and ascend. Or you already know what that does. Deals combat damage to player. And if you have the city's blessing, you draw a card. So it's already two four for a four with death touch. It was already solid. Uh, deals combat damage to a player. You draw uh, if you have Celia's blessing. Draw a card. It's good. It's fine. Arch of Orsica. Land. Send. Normally it taps for colorless mana. Pay five and draw a card. Activates ability only if you have Celia's blessing. It's a rare. Uh, I can think of better cards. Honestly, it just all it does is tap for colorless mana, or you have to pay five and tap it and get one card. No. Ariel or Ari. Ariel? It's not Sire. Ariel. Ari Rayal. Ari. What? Oh, Arterial. Arterial. Is it? Arterial. Arterial. There we go. Arterial flow, like artery. Uh, two black, one of any color for a sorcery. Uncommon. Each opponent discards two cards. If you control a vampire, each opponent loses two life, and you gain two life. Uh, yeah, it's all card. Uh, it's a mind rot that's priced slightly differently, and if you're in a vampire deck, which you'd want to be using this card, they'll also lose two life and you'll gain two life. It's good. Solid. Play it. You need one red. Sorcery. A common. Target a creature an opponent controls deals damage equal to its power to another target creature that a player controls. I can't remember if this is a reprint or not, but it's solid. It's good. You're, it's fight, but you're not fighting. they're not fighting you back, so it's good that way. Negate gets a reprint. Naturalize gets a reprint. Reprint. Um, Negate's got some sweet art on it, by the way. Uh, and I do like the fact that the Giants were crushing a little sword with Naturalize. Blood Sun, like Blood Moon, get it? One red, two of any color for an enchantment rare. When Blood Sun enters the battlefield, draw a card. Right off the bat, there's value. All lands lose all abilities except mana abilities. I, I get it, but... Mm, it's tough... I don't, I don't see. I can't remember what classifies as activated. I mean, tapping is an activated ability. A mono ability is just like well, on the next card, Sun Color Raptor. It's a one two for two, one red and any color trample. You pay two and one red, and it gets plus three plus. Oh. Okay, then actually, yeah, I can understand why this card exists in this set because all the legendary lands have activated abilities. Some of them have mana and activated abilities, but they're pay mana and then tap. That's still an activated ability. Uh, by the way, the Sun Color Raptor is fine. Sun Crested Paradon or Pterodon is one white for a bending color to for a two five dinosaur flying. If it has vigilance as long as you control another dinosaur, okay. R Resplendent Griffin. We have a Griffin, which is a macaw jaguar mix, which is kind of awesome. Uh, one blue, one black, uh, one blue, one white, one of any color for a two two Griffin ascend flying. When this creature attacks, if you have the city's blessing, put a plus one plus one counter on it. This is a solid card on its own. A two a two two. Flyer for three, it's great. Uh, it's it's uh, it's on the curb. It's great. You add the ascend ability in there, which is not hard to get because again, you just have to get it off once, and you'll have the city's blessing for the rest of the game. You immediately have a time a time clock that you need to just go. So when it attacks, it gets the plus one counter. When it attacks, it immediately becomes a three three. Other flyers need to be big enough to counter that, otherwise you're going to have problems quick. Raging Regisaur is one red, one green, two of any color for a 4-4 dinosaur. When it attacks, deals one damage to a target creature or player. It's designed to activate in rage, or it can just ping someone. So it's overall pretty solid. A Hornswoggle, one, white, one blue, two of any color for an instant, rare. Counter target greed spell, and you put an artifact uh, treasure token into the battlefield. We already know what those do. It's a counter spell with value to it. I can't see anything wrong with that. Uh, Mastermind's Acquisition. I 
think this might be Tezzeret stealing the Immortal Sun. Two black, two of any color. Story card, by the way. Sorcery, rare. Choose one. Search your library for a card. Put it into your hand. Then shuffle your library. Or choose a card from out you own from outside the game. Put it into your hand. Um... For sideboards, great. The outside the game, sure. Uh, look for your, it's a search engine basically. It's a diabolic tutor, pretty much, with an extra effect. That's exactly what it is. And I'm for that in that sense, it's fine. It's fine. It's, it's a slightly different cost than diabolic tutor, but it's, it's fine. Champion of Dusk, two gray, uh, two black, three Benny Clark for a four four vampire knight. When Champion of Dusk enters the battlefield, you draw X cards and lose X life, or X is the number of vampires you control. I don't like this card. And I don't like this card because there's, first off, you're playing 5 mana for a 4-4 four, four with no additional value after it's on the field. So it has nothing else going in for it. When there's the battlefield, you'll draw X cards for the amount of vampires you control. So at minimum, you control, you'll control you draw one card, but you'll lose one life. If you're running vampires and you're in a vampire strategy, I imagine you might be having like a bunch of like 1-1 one, one tokens out. If you've got like 5 vampires on the field when this guy comes out, that's 6 vampires, you're losing 6 life and you're drawing 6 cards. I'm assuming they designed it in the sense that the vampire strategy you're running has lifelink and life gain involved. Because otherwise, this card's going to hurt you. This card's going to hurt you bad. And again, it has no value beyond just playing it as a spell with a, on a stick and no other value. It's got no, it doesn't have trample. It doesn't even have flying or lifelink. At least give it lifelink to counteract that. Then you might have had something there. Maybe you could even bump it up the mythic status at that point. But no, no. Uh, dinosaur Hunter, one black, one of any color for a 2-2 human pirate. Whenever a Dinosaur Hunter deals damage to a dinosaur, destroy that creature. Now, at first I'm like, dude, this is hacked against dinosaur decks. But then I realize, oh no, it's when it deals damage. He still takes damage. He'll still die. Uh, it, it's fine. Otherwise, it's just a bear. It's a bear with a bonus, so that that's good. Uh, sea Legs, one blue, enchantment aura, common, flash, enchanted cre enchant creature. It gets plus 2, plus 0 oh if it's a pirate. Otherwise, he gets put minus two, minus so. I like that. That's that's a great bit of flavor. You see this pirate standing over this guy puking over his head. like, ha ha, I don't vomit when I'm on a ship. Uh, pit, uh, pitless plunderer. Plunder, uh, plunderer. One black, three of any color for a one four human pirate. Whenever another creature you control dies, create a colorless treasure artifact token. Value. It, it, I mean, it's just going to sit around pretty much. Maybe be a butt. Maybe eventually chump. Maybe sacrifice itself and be chump blocking. But it's good. It's fine. Uh, and last but not least, least, until they probably spoil like 10 more cards before the night's over. Buccaneers Bravado. One red. One of any color for it. Instant. Common. Choose one. Target creature gets plus one, plus one. Gains first strike until the end turn. Or target pirate gets plus one, plus one. And gains double strike until the end turn. As a combat trick, trick, it's pretty solid. And if you're in the pirate deck, it's even more solid. So yeah, Jesus, I wanted to be as quick as possible. I actually had to talk about. I spent some time talking about a couple of them. Still went to nearly 30 minutes, man. Uh, maybe I should have split it instead. Oh well. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Now see you, folks. Uh, uh, like, comment, share, subscribe. I just who would win Star Wars Super? What if anything I do in the channel? Put it in the comments below. Um, Again, yeah, maybe a little bit. I'll get home. There'll probably be a magic video tomorrow, just to sum up all the other spoilers. Uh, Dragon Ball Super, Molly's game review, and box office, and the remaining what if later in the week. So thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you next time.